Jawaharlal Nehru once said, What is my inheritance? To what am I an heir? To all that humanity has achieved during tens of thousands of years, to all that it has thought and felt, to its cries of triumph and its bitter agony of defeat, to that astonishing adventure of man, which began so long ago and yet continues and beckons to us. The inheritance of the past has been preserved for us by the enterprise of a few dedicated individuals. One such man was Mir Yusuf Ali Khan, Salar Jang III. Born in 1889, he was the doyen of an ancient family of Hyderabad. His grandfather, Mir Turab Ali Khan, popularly known as Salar Jang I, was appointed Prime Minister to the Sixth Nizam. After his death in 1882, his son, Mir Layak Ali Khan, Salar Jang II, also served as Prime Minister. He died in 1889, leaving behind a 10-day-old son, Mir Yusuf Ali Khan. This child grew up under the personal care of the last Nizam, Mir Usman Ali Khan. It was a childhood filled with fantasy and toy soldiers. Yusuf Ali Khan grew up to become the third Salar Jung and Prime Minister to the Nizam at the age of 24. However, he relinquished the post in November of 1914 and devoted the rest of his life to the cause of art and literature. When he died, he left behind perhaps the largest private collection of art in the world. To perpetuate the memory of this great connoisseur and to preserve his priceless treasure for posterity, the Salar Jung Museum was established in 1951. It is administered by the Salar Jung Museum Board under the Government of India. The museum has a founder's gallery, which provides intimate glimpses of the life and times of the Salar Jung family through a wealth of personal effects, family heirlooms, gifts and mementos. The gallery of Indian sculpture shows the creative endeavor of unknown Indian sculptors who shaped divine figures. The Gupta kings were famous for their patronage of sculptors, as were the South Indian dynasties of the Pallavas, Cholas, and the Kakatiya. Another dynamic art form, which has been known in India since the days of Mohenjo-daro, is that of bronze casting. Conceptually, the greatest bronzes of South India are of Nataraj, representing Shiva and his cosmic dance. The Pallava, Chola and the Vijayanagar emperors also adorn their temples with magnificent bronzes. The Soma Skanda group presents Shiva with his consort Parvati and their child Skanda, signifying the joy of family life. The Jains also cast imposing bronzes of their Tirthankaras. In different parts of the country, devotees use different types of wall hanging to decorate the abode of their gods. Kalamkari Art was born in Andhra Pradesh. The Pichwai, yet another form of cloth painting, 
was used to provide a backdrop to the image of the deity by the followers of Srinathji. Intricate designs were the masterly achievements of ivory carvers in India, China and Japan. An early creation depicts a couple representing the Nayak period, as depicted in the Ramayan, Lakshman cutting the nose of Surupanka. Ivory chairs presented by Louis XVI to Tipu Sultan. The smooth surface of ivory was used by the painters of the Mughal period. Sarar Jung accumulated an amazing array of ancient weapons belonging to Jahangir, Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb, Tipu Sultan and others. We move from the deadly to the beautiful, the magical world of jade. Jade is so hard that even steel cannot scratch it. These shapes were created by many years of careful rubbing and polishing. The Chinese were the first to use jade. The art then spread to Turkestan, Persia and India. It found its zenith during the Mughal period. Daggers associated with Akbar Jahangir and a fruit knife belonging to Nul Jahan have handles of jade inlaid with precious gems. They have no parallels in delicacy of workmanship. Jade also lent itself to creation of articles of beautiful floral designs inlaid with gold and studded with gems. Being hard, jade was popular for the making of archers' rings. A title of Shah Jahan sahab e is inscribed here. The Meenakari work on gold was lovingly done by the artisans of Jaipur. Meenakari was used to decorate utensils. One can see here not only examples of Indian Meenakari, but also a Russian coffee set with similar work. The Salar Jung Museum has a remarkable collection of metalware. There are outstanding creations in Bidri ware, produced from an alloy of five metals and worked with silver thread. A unique hookah with gold Bidri work is perhaps the only one of its kind in existence. Silver craft is represented by beautiful examples of filigree work by the artisans of Karim Nagar and Katak. A section of the gallery is devoted to metalware with Islamic motives. Quotations from the Holy Quran were used to decorate utensils. The adaptability of Indian craftsmen in Mughal times is evident from the creation of glassware, a craft which came from medieval Europe. Wood has played an important role in art since primitive times. Kashmir is famous for its intricate designs on walnut. The artisans of South India created enduring works of art, especially on sandalwood, which has a place in religious rites. Salar Jung's collection of textiles represents a panoramic view of the rich variety of Indian fabrics. Cottons and brocades, dhaka muslin and silks, velvets and wool, Mughal costume, bridal dresses, the rich zari work of Banaras, and Kashmiri shawls 
belonging to the 18th and 19th centuries. The museum is a fabulous collection of silk and woolen carpets. Carpets worked in gold and silver, soft, silky and light of weight. Carpets from the famous looms of Persia, Kashan, Bukhara, Tabriz, Kirman, Shiraz. The very names as exciting and exotic as the carpets. fine art reflect the history and life of a people. India is famous for its miniature paintings. Salar Jung collected representative works belonging to various schools. The earliest examples of miniature painting relate to the Jain tradition of Western India in the 14th century. There was always a strong Persian influence in the Mughal miniatures. They have sober yet pleasing color schemes, tantalizing depths of field, precise lines and contours. Shah Jahan's period evolved a new technique known as Siakalam. The paintings of the Deccan retained the elegance of the Mughal schools, but their line, rhythm and colors were different. The Rajasthani paintings show poetic imagination, rhythmic movement and clarity of composition. An important theme was the ragmala, the garland of different musical moods. Most popular was the Krishna Leela, Lord Krishna, Radha and the Milkmaid. Rajput miniatures moved along the pilgrim routes to the hills of Basholi and Kangra. This Pahari school developed its own lyrical style in the depiction of epics and folklore. The era of modern Indian painting began at the turn of the century with the realistic works of Raja Ravi Verma. Though his idiom was Western, he painted mythological themes and contemporary Indian life. The artists of the Bengal school shook off the influence of the West and developed a truly Indian art form. By the mid 20th century, abstract art came to the forefront. Salar Jung was interested in the art forms of all the world. Mephistopheles and Margareta, signifying perhaps good and evil, are carved on two sides of the same piece of wood. A sizable collection of marble statues from Italy, France and England are housed in the museum. Cleopatra, the work of Barioni, Among the best known is the Veiled Rebecca, sculpted by Benzoni. The collection of European paintings contain interesting watercolors and oil paintings by British, French, Italian and Dutch artists. The Piazza San Marco by Canaletto is a delightful piece combining beautiful architecture and excellent perspective. Two landscapes by John Constable represent a part of the English collection. The museum has an excellent collection of porcelain. Sèvres in France was a famous center for European porcelain. By the 18th century, Dresden in Germany had become an important center for the manufacture of porcelain. Candler modeled a figurine of a tailor riding a goat, an outstanding example. From England, Salar Jung brought pieces of the famous Wedgwood porcelain. The scintillating creations of the glass blowers of Venice, France, England, Bohemia, Belgium, and the cut glass of Czechoslovakia occupy a pride of place in the Salarjung Museum. 
gold-plated wine cups, especially designed for Salar Jung, are a tribute to his taste. The news of Salar Jung's passionate love for art had spread far and wide. His palace was forever thronged with art dealers from all corners of the world. It was perhaps from one of them that he obtained copies and originals of some prized pieces of period furniture from France and England. He also bought originals and copies of European bronzes. The Night Watchman is an original. The most impressive copy is of a boy picking a thorn after an anonymous Greek sculpture of the second century BC. The ancient civilization of China also has much to offer the viewer. The rulers of the Sung and Ming dynasties patronized the production of porcelain and celadon ware as early as the 12th century. An ancient example is a plate with a painting of a dragon with ho-ho birds. The most remarkable exhibits from China are the snuff bottles. Making these delicate designs from the insides of these tiny bottles must have called for tremendous skill and extraordinary patience. Chinese bronzes reflect the influence of Buddhism. A statue of Bodhisattva of Alokiteshvara belongs to the 18th century. This tankha, or wall hanging from Tibet, provides a fitting backdrop to the image of Lord Buddha. The Chinese craftsmen were also famous for their lacquer work and the inlaying of wooden furniture. The people of Japan have their own distinct identity in the realm of art. Salar Jung's impressive collection of Japanese art objects includes Imari and Satsuma porcelain, bowls and vases, beautifully decorated. Japan has no elephant, but their carvers used ivory to design fine scabbards and handles for samurai swords. The needlework from Japan is fascinating. An important wing of the museum is the library and manuscript section. It is a treasure house of rare manuscripts and books in various languages. The Quran, written by Yaqub al-Mustasmi in the Naqsh style, is autographed by Jahangir, Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb. There are illuminated Qurans and manuscripts by many master calligraphists. They are illustrated by artists of rare talent. There are manuscripts in Arabic, Persian, Turkish, Urdu, Sanskrit and other languages. They cover a wide field of poetry, history and philosophy. The Salarjung Museum in Hyderabad represents the long history of civilization. It mirrors the culture of the past and continues to acquire new works for the generations of the future. <laughs>